Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Trusted CI webinar this morning on our fellows program. And um, so it's going to be myself and the co-lead for the, the fellows, uh, Dana Brunson. And then we've got uh, five of the, the six 2019 fellows uh, that are going to be joining us and sharing some thoughts. Uh, Dana, if you could go on to the next slide, please. So our goal this morning is to provide you an overview of Trusted CI, specifically the Trusted CI Fellows Program, and then the application process uh, for 2020. Uh, we're going to hear from myself, Dana, the five fellows you see listed there on the screen, and then we'll have some time for Q&A at the very end. Uh, you will note that attendees are muted. You should see a chat button on your screen. Uh, you can chat questions to us and or the fellows at any time. Uh, we will, however, answer the, uh, the, the questions after all the presentations at the very end. And uh, this whole session is being recorded and will be posted, so it'll be available for uh, a reference later on. So with that, let me jump right into the overview of Trusted CI and next slide, please. So this is uh, just a quick overview and you can see our mission here. Our mission is to support the NSF cyber infrastructure community broadly in tackling cybersecurity and related challenges. And we are a distributed center uh, made up of the organizations you see there on the screen. Next slide. So for those of you maybe not familiar with the term cyber infrastructure, if you're not uh, part of the, the NSF uh, community and know it's vernacular, roughly speaking, you can think of it as research computing infrastructure and all the software and hardware goes into it. So when you hear us use the term uh, trusted CI, just want to give you that, that context. Next slide, please, Dana. And one thing to realize about the National Science Foundation, it's a highly distributed, diverse community. Uh, so NSF in the last year alone funded over 11,000 awards and over 1,500 of those were million dollar awards. So awards of significant size. You know, NSF is, I believe it is the largest funder of basic research in the United States. And so it funds everything across seven different science directorates, everything from biology to engineering to astro astronomy to physics. So all these different projects in the NSF community that Trusted CI serves, uh, really they, they run the whole, the whole gauntlet. Next slide. And you hear Trusted CI talk quite a bit about our role is to balance the science mission with the risks that go along with it. And so we're, we, we're a very uh, progressive project that does a lot of outreach to the scientific community to understand their mission, understand their risks, and then work with them on this. And so you won't hear us particularly drive a particular solution because we understand that may vary. You know, some, it, some facilities may need something like 800-171. For others, it's the CIS controls because they're more on the open side uh, et cetera. Next slide, please, Dana. Our primary way of engaging more deeply is we do one-on-one -on -one collaborations. And we've done this uh, now with around 50 different NSF projects all across the United States and even across uh, the globe in a, in a few cases. And we will, these engagements will involve really tackling any challenge that the project has. Probably our most popular one is projects that are looking to get started on a cybersecurity program and some help getting bootstrapped. And then a, a second most popular one is a project that has a cybersecurity program and is just looking to mature it. But we've got a, a whole set of examples. And if you go to that link at the bottom of the slide here, you can see a set of examples from all sorts of different projects in terms of what we've done. Next, please, Dana. Uh, just one example here to make that a little bit more concrete was uh, an engagement we did earlier in 2019 with the Polar Geospatial Center up at the University of Minnesota. And so this was a case where they had a cybersecurity program in place. They have, uh, you know, had some, some particular needs around data they were sharing. And so we worked with them 
over a, a six month period to, to do help them do a risk assessment to mature that, that program. Next please, Dana. We also have a sort of broadening impact here, a wide variety of best practices on our website that, you're, that are free to uh, the world that you're welcome to go and take a look at and often have guidance that is tailored for the scientific community. So this is uh, something that takes into account the particulars of the open science and NSF mission. And these are all freely available. Next, please. And then we uh, really encourage folks to, to join us every year at our annual cybersecurity uh, summit. And I apologize, this slide is, uh, has last year's summit on it. Our, our summit uh, next year in 2020 will be September 22nd through 24th. And it will be, I'm excited to say, hosted here in Bloomington, Indiana. So it'll be in the Midwest after being on uh, the two coasts. And uh, there will be a, a call for participation that comes out in the summer. And so you're welcome to show up and attend or also submit, uh, you know, try out your experiences with cybersecurity in your community. And we really uh, enjoy having that sort of sharing. Next, please, Dana. Uh, really proud if you wanna learn a little bit more in depth, I'm giving a very high level overview of Trusted CI. I encourage you to read our, our impacts report. It's about a year old now, but still will give you a pretty good sense of the sorts of, of activities that, that Trusted CI undertakes and that have been uh, going to some of the things that I've just mentioned here. Next, please. And finally, I want to mention, hopefully I've given you an idea of the different communities that we engage with and the breadth of projects and communities. And so I always like to drive home the, the point, particularly when we're doing calls for open, open applications uh, about you know, the need for inclusivity in what we do and really hope to encourage um, everybody from no matter you know, community or demographics uh, to apply for this. Next, please. And we also work very closely with a number of partners in the community. Uh, I won't go through this whole list here, but if you see groups you all here that you may recognize, uh, know that we may work with them and you may see some of our, our work in that, that collaboration. And next please, Dana. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to my uh, co-lead on the fellows, um, Dana Brunson from Internet2. Thanks, Vaughn, and thanks for the overview. So now I'd like to just give an overview of the fellows program, um, what the application requirements are, and, and hopefully be quick. Uh, so the fellows program started in 2019, just this year. It's a op for open science cybersecurity. The program aims to establish this network of fellows that are diverse in both geography and scientific discipline and, and others. Um, the fellows will have access to training, other resources, and hopefully you know, foster their professional development in cybersecurity. The, the fellows will champion cybersecurity for their scientific and geographic communities and communicate challenges back to uh, Trusted STI as well as their successes. The vision is to empower the fellows with knowledge of cybersecurity and of trusted CI services, fellow service liaisons between the broader community and, and trusted CI. They can assist members of their community with cybersecurity challenges and then connect them with trusted CI for advanced challenges. And over time, I hope that uh, the fellows through the year over year cohorts become this community of practice around cybersecurity for science. So, so the fellows program, um, it's, so we have a virtual institute and this is 20 weekly Zoom sessions of an hour each. Each fellow will get travel support for um, typically three trips. We, we recommend PERC and then of course the cybersecurity summit that Vaughn mentioned, plus one mutually agreed upon opportunity. And by the end of the year, each fellow will present or write a short white paper on the needs of their community and some initial steps they'll take or have taken to address those. So for instance, this year, um, we had a good time. The fellows served on panels at both PERC and at the Cybersecurity Summit. 
So to give you a taste of what the virtual institute is, this, you know, as our inaugural year, this was the the first ever. Uh, you can see here the the topics we covered and the best and the guest speakers we had. I'm not going to read them all to you, <laughs> but uh, oh, I mentioned in the chat that we will share these slides. But you can see we covered um, a number of topics from you know, basic cybersecurity program, firewalls, CISO perspectives, uh, we had NSF talk, identity and access management, and, and many more. Uh, and, 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 oh, another one to mention is from NEON uh, to hear how, how that, how all these things work in practice. So who should apply? And, and we made this list extra long. Uh, so professionals and postdocs interested in cybersecurity for science, uh, research computing data and IT technical or policy professionals, domain scientists interested in this, scientists from across all seven NSF directorates. And then let's see, so researchers Current, currently in the US, researchers in the NSF 10 Big Ideas, and regional network security personnel, um, people comfortable collaborating and communicating across multiple institutions, and anyone, anyone in any role relevant to cybersecurity for open science. And this is where, you know, if you have a question about this, feel free to ask. We'll, we'll do our best to answer. So the application process, and this, this everything I'm telling you today is on this website, the, at, at trustedci.org slash fellow slash apply. So you'll need to submit a description of your connection to the research community. And you, you need to, it'd be good if you wrote specifically of NSF projects that you're a part of or supporting or you know, have a relationship with. Um, you'll submit a statement of interest in cybersecurity. If you have demonstrated experience, you can include that. And then a two page bio sketch. And then a letter of support from your supervisor supporting the time commitment you're making in this program and a commitment to participate for the entire year with optional activities after that. So the selection criteria that we've developed is to look at your connect, connection with, this, with scientific research, with, with preferences given to those who demonstrate a connection to NSF funded science, um, how well you've articulated your interest in cybersecurity, and of course, fellows that broaden trusted CI's impact across all seven NSF directorates, or the NSF 10 big ideas, and fellows that increase our particip the participation of underrepresented populations. So, you know, we want to emphasize that fellows can come from a variety of career stages. We'd like them to demonstrate a passion for their area and uh, the ability to communicate ideas effectively and help, help, you know, enlarge the the interest the, the role of cybersecurity in research so fellows will be empowered to talk about cybersecurity in their in their communities the wider audience and network with others that share a passion for cybersecurity for open science and learn key skills that benefit them and their collaborators so with that we're about ready to hand it off to to the fellows themselves to tell you their point of view so here are the 2019 fellows, and I'm going to, in the interest of time, go ahead and see if Anshal is ready to take over. Yes? All right. So Anshal, please take the baton. All right. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Sounds okay, awesome. great. Uh, first of all, thank you all for coming out to this webinar. Um, and I'm really quickly going to talk about some of my experiences uh, as a fellow. Uh, so real quick, uh, I am an associate professor with the Department of Criminal Justice at Humboldt University in Philadelphia. And I look at adversarial decision-making and adaptation in real-time cyber attacks so as they unfold. 
So one of the reasons um, I, one of the many reasons, I guess, um, that I wanted to apply for this fellowship is because um, as a social scientist, I'm always struggling to see how our discipline can uh, connect with uh, the technical domain and uh, you know what what can we do uh, as a discipline to be more useful so i have some bullet points here obviously right but uh, i wanted to now i'm at that stage in my career like i said i'm an associate professor so now i can branch out and be a little bit more adventurous uh, and i wanted to look at how can we incorporate the human factor a little bit more in existing research uh, in practice um, and how does the discipline need to grow uh, to make it more useful to uh, the cybersecurity discourse in particular, um, but also uh, as a discipline just grow and make itself more heard in uh, the cybersecurity dialogue. Uh, Dana, next slide please. Thank you. Uh, I thought this fellowship was a wonderful, wonderful opportunity and I'm going to encourage everybody to apply. Um, there were many things that I got out of this. For one thing, um, if you remember the slide that Dana showed um, as to the really diverse uh, array of topics that were covered. And I think we can all, to a certain extent, agree that we're, you know, we're stuck in our own respective disciplines and we're, uh, you know, trying to get work done there. And there's a lot of sort of silo-based thinking. And uh, I got a lot of exposure to different topics. And that was a breath of fresh air. It was educational. It made me look at, oh, wow, I didn't even know this stuff exists out there. And um, you know, how can I really start making those connections? So, so it's mostly uh, exposure. I got to learn from the different topic areas. So not just for my research purposes, but also as an educator, how much of this can I take back and share with my classes, which are multidisciplinary. So I'll have social science students, computer science students, engineering students in there. So how can we um, help, how can we, I guess, be educated and then pass that on? So in a way, this was a process of educating the educators, which I thought was really lovely. Um, networking was uh, amazing as well. So you're gonna hear from some amazing uh, fellows um, uh, you know, right after I'm done, but I was just amazed at each and every one of them, right? Because they're doing so many different unique things. So I really, really got to learn from some really bright people from a, a multidisciplinary group just within our cohort, but also from the speakers that we brought in, from the uh, events that we went out to, like PERC and the summit. Uh, and it was, like I said, a great way to just network and learn. What I really like about this also is its flexibility. So the webinars just make it really easy. And like a lot of other fellowships, uh, which might require you to take time away, uh, you can, it's a great return on investment uh, while carrying on with your academic and research work. So it's not disruptive and you really get to learn a lot. And I'm really looking forward to that training opportunity uh, that was mentioned earlier. Uh, because again, as I mentioned, as an educator, I find that I don't really get a lot of time or opportunities um, or access, you know, to, to go and pursue something and, and retrain myself and learn again and be a student. Um, so I think that's a wonderful thing. And they're really, uh, the group um, is really flexible and will work with and cater to your interests. So uh, please, again, apply, apply, apply. This is a great opportunity. That's it from me. Thanks. Thanks, Anshal. Next up, we have Gabby. Okay. Hi. Yeah, my name is Gabby Perez or Gabriella. Um, I'm a staff member at the University of Iowa. So my official title is a research technology compliance specialist. Um, and I work in the research services department that is part of the central IT organization at, on campus. So if I had to sum up kind of like in a sentence what I do, um, my job is to help researchers with, and IT professionals with data security and compliance. Um, so this particular fellowship was really interesting to me because you know, as someone who, who acts as a security liaison on campus, you know, staying up to date on the current cybersecurity trends and things, would be really important for me in order to help the researchers and IT staff and everyone else that I help on campus with data security and compliance and 
if you've ever heard of NIST, you know, like it's, it's just a big thing for me. So this was actually really helpful and that was the main reason why I've applied. Um, so again, I guess you can advance to the next slide. <laughs> um, so some things that I found really valuable um, and I, it was pretty much everything that Anshul said. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, just exposure to different topics that aren't necessarily my focus areas, which is really important, I think, and also really valuable to me uh, just to be able to see and learn about things that, you know, don't necessarily affect, you know, my line of work, but having that knowledge in the background as I'm talking to researchers and IT staff, that's really helpful. Um, so the exposure is one thing. Um, networking, I think, was the biggest thing for me. Um, uh, just being able to meet all the other fellows, which are, they're all great. Um, the organizer, speakers, the trusted CI staff. Um, I met, you know, several people that, you know, I didn't know existed that kind of do the same kind of line of work that I do and, and we're rare. <laughs> um, so that was really helpful. And I was able to do presentations with people that I met at PERC and the cybersecurity summit and things. So I'm like actually like actively working with people that I met through this fellowship. So that's really, um, that's been really valuable to me. And then, um, just the, so our particular fellowship group was very uh, active in asking questions, and um, you know most of the other fellows are researchers, um, and 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 the ones that, I mean everyone comes from a different perspective, so it's really helpful for me to hear you know what are they, what are the researchers, what are they asking questions about, what are they concerned about, so as someone who works with researchers, that's really important to me to know so that. Um, you know, I can improve the kind of services and information that we provide to um, researchers at the University of Iowa campus. So um, their questions were <laughs> sometimes, they were just, you guys were awesome. <laughs> um, I learned a lot from you guys as well as from the, the trainings. So um, this has been a really valuable experience and I also encourage everybody who's interested to apply. That's it. Thanks. Thank you, Gabby, and I agree. Y'all are awesome, and this has been a great year. Uh, next up is Jay. I'll give you your slide. Thank you, Dana, and Gabby. You are you are awesome. You're the awesome one right there. <laughs> uh, so I'm Jay uh, from Rochester Institute of Technology. I'm a professor there. I work on research. Uh, my research area is really to model cyber attacks. Uh, my kind of a user or customer, in a way, of my research consumer. My research will be uh, the SOC analyst. Uh, people, IT people who actually help uh, the trust CI community as well. So uh, my motivation in joining the fellowship is to engage practitioners, engage people who are in this area who might be potentially use my research down the road. So I love to know more about them, know more about the, what kind of real problem, real challenges. Will my, uh, is my research in the right direction for them? How do I communicate with them? Uh, and so on and so forth. And then uh, I will share with you uh, the next slide. Uh, I actually got a lot out of it. But also, uh, just one more point then, I'm sorry. Uh, but also I, I do uh, enjoy a lot in terms of this uh, interdisciplinary kind of interaction, um, people's day-to-day -day operations and life, not just practitioners and SOC analysts, but also people like Gabby and other people. Thank you, next slide. So uh, as it turned out that uh, I achieved uh, my goal from the beginning and more. Uh, so first of all, that through these interactions, uh, conversations with practitioners and other uh, experts on the field, in the field that actually across fields that relate to start the CI cybersecurity area, that I was able to shape and refine our research and how our research can address those challenges. And I give more and more, uh, more focus, uh, meaning that how our models can actually present it as a near real-time trust of threat intelligence uh, for, for SOC analysts. And we also found quite a few practitioners who see this potential value of our research. So this is for those people who might be thinking about applying to the fellowship to help see their research into practice, a transition to practice into real world for other people to use, I see this great opportunity as well. And I do learn a lot of aspects uh, that related to uh, cybersecurity, but not necessarily in my area. They included computational re uh, reproducibility, the trust yet curriculum or program in a way to help other people and so on and so forth. Most importantly, I really, I became part of this uh, community, which I believe is very consequential. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. 
That's very nice. And next up, we have Matthias. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. That's awesome. Great. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Um, just following on on the other fellows. I'm I'm Matthias. I wear different hats. Um, I, and then when you read all those titles, you you realize that it makes sense for me to apply for this um, trust CI. So I'm I'm a scientist. At NCSA, um, we manage um, many projects, but including DES and LCT, which are two NSF uh, astronomical projects. Uh, for one of them, I serve as a release scientist, data release scientist, and I'm also a you know research professor in astronomy. And and I divide my my you know my day working mostly doing research, uh, but also building cyber infrastructure, including you know the scientific gateways, and doing a lot of scientific cloud computing. And, and visualization. So my motivation for, for this fellowship was mostly is um, understanding, you know, the scientific platform, the scientific gateways from a security perspective. Uh, as a researcher, we never got any any formal training on security aspect, and we just, you know, plow our way uh, in building um, tools and, and a cyber infrastructure without having kind of all, all these extra security factors into um, also, I wanted to engage more with the uh, research uh, cyber infrastructure community, uh, primarily safe, but from, you know, from in general, and learning about you know what are the best practices in in risk management, security controls, and policy, among others, and how you put that into the design when it comes to building scientific getaway, scientific uh, you know cyber infrastructure for for researchers. So I can provide all the feedback necessary for from this research perspective, but also I wanted to provide uh, the necessary feedback from the security perspective uh, in how to implement that yeah, in, in, in a secure um, uh, gateway. And also becoming familiar with, with, with topics that I'm way less familiar than others, um, and in order to be kind of a complete uh, and you know, holistic view of um, our scientific gateway. Um, next, please. So, so, so through this fellowship and through, through these um, webinars, uh, I learned quite a lot, and it's been it's been an amazing process because there's a lot of things uh, covered that you you hear about everywhere else. Um, but here we have you know, dedicated sessions for different aspects in cybersecurity, which are critical for for uh, at least for me and and for our team. To, to learn about. So, so we start implementing several of these concepts that we learn during during these sessions in our current cyber infrastructure, especially as, as I mentioned before, in terms of risk assessment, risk, uh, risk mitigation, and security controls, and how, how we deal with those, which before that was mostly unthinkable or, or left to somebody else to do. So uh, now at least we have a, a better understanding. And at the same time, I've been trying to educating and, and being Sort of, sort of like a proxy for others in our team um, and to have everybody in the same page when it comes to you know security uh, behind our services. So it's been a great experience you know engaging with other communities, other fellows. Uh, I, I, you already hear you know a different uh, backgrounds and that's, that's, been, that's been great because it, it goes Beyond to what we do, and open you know our mind to what others are doing and facing the similar issues um, in different fields. And and as as has been mentioned, it's been very very interesting topic every week. Uh, Anshul mentioned you know the return on the investment is is great. You, you know you 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 put it on the calendar. You commit every week to to attend this, this meeting. There's a lot of questions. And at the end, uh, you're learning a lot, and there's a lot of notes that I've been taking um, uh, over, over the past uh, year um, in terms of um, the, dif the different, you know, um, topics. Um, also, Vaughn mentioned the incredible, you know, source of materials and resources. Uh, we kept reminding that the Trusted CI uh, page itself has a lot of materials and talks and. And, and documents that uh, we, we always go back and look through uh, because there's, there's a lot of you know resources to go, uh, but you know it's always there, uh, which, which is which is good. So, and also you know we, we had the chance to attend these very useful workshops and meetings like PERC um, or or the NSF summit, which otherwise are usually under uh, under our radar. So this is also a good exposition to 
all these resources and, and the cybersecurity community out there. And I just want to thank you for the opportunity because it's been a great experience and a lot of you know learning during the last um, you know 20 or so sessions. So thank you. Thank you, Matias. That was very nice. Um, let's see. So bringing this home is Shafak. Are you ready? Oh, do we? There we go. All right. Hey, um, I'm Shafak. Uh, I'm the assistant director for graduate and research IT at the University of Central Florida. In my role, I'm responsible for the data center, the application development, the regulated research environment for controlled unclassified information, and uh, last but not the least, research facilitation, uh, specifically in uh, cloud computing. Uh, also, I'm a PhD candidate in computer engineering program, uh, and my research areas are public safety communications and software-defined networking. So um, I was very motivated to apply for the fellowship, and primarily because I wanted to um, learn as much as I can about cybersecurity and cyber infrastructure, uh, specifically in the context of research environments, uh, with the idea to uh, bring back uh, the knowledge to my institution and uh, you know, play a uh, better uh, role uh, in solving some of the challenges that we are having back at our institution. Uh, this was a great opportunity to um, get connected with um, leaders from other research institutions and also getting to know the various NSF programs um, that exist uh, for uh, supporting and helping researchers. Uh, some of them were mentioned earlier, but I would like to mention them again. So Trusted CI Engagement Program is, uh, has consulting services for NSF projects. Um, the uh, EPIC, which is an engagement and performance operations center, helps researchers uh, with uh, uh, several um, um, different areas, uh, specifically, for example, for debugging any data transfer issues or making effective uh, use of their cyber infrastructure to serve the needs of their particular project. Um, and there are other programs also like the Cyber Infrastructure uh, Center of Excellence for large facilities. Um, that's a pilot program from NSF as well. And uh, we at U uh, UCF do have a large uh, facility, um, Arecibo in Puerto Rico, so I was very excited to learn about these programs. Um, so um, I, I think I would just kind of echo some of the sentiments from the past fellows. Uh, the, the training was very holistic. Um, the sessions uh, covered many different areas from software security to identity access management to uh, how to uh, how to run a security operations center from open science to regulated science so it was a whole you know complete picture I really appreciated that because uh, a lot of these things um, I don't deal with on a day-to-day -day basis uh, so it helps you um, speak the same language as other uh, operators uh, in the community so when you are having those communications with them um, you know you're kind of on the same page and um, and um, able to speak the same language. Um, so next slide, please. And um, I just want to mention two of the uh, uh, proposals or, or initiatives that came out of um, my trust CI engagement. Uh, one was a proposal to the VP for research here at UCF for a two-day agenda for uh, doing a research computing review panel. And the idea was to invite guests from uh, other institutions and have discussions on the needs uh, in terms of data compute, networking, compliance, etc., and also uh, hear what has worked for them and what recommendations they have for us. Uh, second, uh, we are also working with the EPIC team, which is the, again the Engagement and Performance Operations Center, in order to organize a research deep dive, which would be um, a two-day uh, session, uh, hands-on kind of session with them on site here in April in UCF. And um, the idea over there is that uh, we'll handpick a couple of uh, research projects uh, that have some certain challenges uh, in, uh, in the, from the cyber infrastructure perspective and um, go over those challenges and get some recommendations on how to solve those challenges. And this will be followed by a community regional training day on research computing, which will also, again, be uh, kind of facilitated by the EPIC team, and we will just be handling the logistics. So this would be a great opportunity for 
um, the regional uh, community here to get uh, you know additional training uh, from experts in the field. So I just want to um, say that overall this has been very helpful and uh, great professional development experience. Um, the community is super engaging and you will find a lot of support in this uh, community. Even if you don't decide to apply, you can still be engaged. And as others have mentioned, the resources section of the Trusted CI website has a lot of very helpful resources available. And um, their webinars are also uh, posted over there. And I um, um, just want to thank all the Trusted CI staff as well as all the fellows for an overall excellent learning experience. Thanks, Shafak. All right, so here is the information you need uh, while you're typing questions into the chat box. Uh, so the applications are due January 17th, 2020, next year. Um, you can go to Trusted CI, and there's a fellows tab on the top. Um, and if you have any questions, you can write to fellows at trustedci.org. So January 17th, I know there's a lot of things to do that week, but <laughs> so the, all the more reason to get them in early. Um, here's uh, other ways to, to get involved with Trusted CI. There's webinars, public webinars, uh, email lists, social media, and of course, ask us anything. And of course, we'd like to acknowledge the National Science Foundation for their support. And you can also look more at the website to learn more. And of course, this statement. And that, with that, I think I will stop screen sharing and we can look at questions. Let's see. All right. Somebody can confirm that I really did stop sharing my screen. Yep, you look good. Thanks, Danette. Okay, so we have one question so far, um, and I'll, I'll read it, and I'm hoping the fellows will, will be the, the ones that might chime in on answers to this. So I, I am an assistant professor at an HBCU where we are trying to grow our cybersecurity program. Also, we are looking to engage in cybersecurity research. What advice can you provide on composing the application for a new faculty member? Uh, Dana, you want us to address his question or her question? Please go ahead, Jay. Uh, so uh, I'm a professor. Um, I, I'm not. Uh, I just. I'm, I'm not someone who just started professorship. Um, so I'm not sure the advice is absolutely right on target. However, I think that what you want to think about first is to how this experience in interacting with. Uh, people across disciplines and interacting with people who are actually uh, working on cybersecurity related jobs, not just technical uh, related jobs, uh, will benefit you, right? So that's very important in a sense of benefiting you because in my opinion that you just started professorship, there are things that you might want to spend your effort uh, uh, that in a way that, that, that expand your uh, horizon in a way that is, is helping your um, tenure track uh, uh, process. Um, it's realistic kind of concern that, that I, I want to make sure that you can see that. Now for your question is how to make your application that's good. Um, I'm not sure that, that I, 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 I have the best advice, but I think that if you know the answer to what I said earlier, how you will benefit you, how you will uh, bring your expertise to the community, then I think your application will be, will be good. Thank you, Jay. Would anyone else like to offer advice? Yeah, hi, Dina. This, this is Vaughn. I'll, I'll echo uh, Jay's suggestions and just suggest um, the question was from, from Ed. And it uh, sounds like the program is, you know, just getting started. So there's not a lot of, of current activity to sort of emphasize in the application. But my suggestion would be is to, you know, Dana presented a slide on the syllabus and the sorts of things you hear about and the, the sorts of people you'll hear from is maybe emphasize how that information might be useful to you in shaping your curriculum 
or shaping uh, the activities for this, right? So, you know, think a little bit about future looking and conveying your application, uh, how this program might benefit uh, the formation of this, this program to come. I'll just say the, you know, if the fellows program can contribute to shaping a, a program like this in an HBCU, that would be a, a wonderful thing. So I think just think a little bit more in detail about uh, how you might expect that to happen and communicate that. Great, great advice. Anyone else want to offer up for that? Okay, so for the attendees, if you have questions, you can type them in the chat box. And I do want to just thank the fellows. These presentations were wonderful and I appreciate it. And I think I really want to thank you for making this first year extremely enjoyable. So there's no questions right now. We're getting comments of, oh, let's see, here's one. Could we talk a little bit about the review process? So I guess Vaughn and I will have to answer that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, you so go this is. Or? Go ahead. Uh, so the first year we kind of copied, you know, most review. If you've experienced a review process before, this will not be uh, surprising. Is you know we have the applications come in. And then we have a set of reviewers. The first year, the reviewers consisted of the, the leads of trusted CI. And we did get 22 applications. So it ended up being, you know, we were very happy with that, but it was uh, a lot of reviewing. So this year we're asking, you know, the trusted CI leads, we've, we were giving the opportunity to be a reviewer to this group of fellows, as well as the Trusted CI Advisory Committee. And we basically have the, the criterion that I mentioned in the slides where you, when you see the form, it's exactly what I mentioned, where you submit statements of interest, how you're related to cybersecurity and, and the other, other aspects. And each reviewer will go through that and then fill out their, their review form. Um, and then uh, we'll go through and and look at look at how the reviewers responded. So each each one will get reviewed by at minimum three reviewers, uh, and then we will look and if in in the cases of you know where 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 things are, we'll have discussions to go through that. Vaughn, do you do you want to add to that? I would just encourage people to get their applications in a little bit early. We had a couple folks last year who unfortunately forgot um, a letter or something, and unfortunately, that you know they submitted at the last minute, so we weren't able to rectify that, and that did count against them. So, uh, if you do submit early and we notice you're missing something, you know we'll we'll communicate with that with you, but we have to have the time to do so. Okay. Thank you. All right. The next question is. Can you describe the curriculum a bit more? For example, are there readings, assignments, et cetera? I'll take this, Dana. Uh, we did offer to the presenters to suggest readings and so forth ahead of time. I think very few of them actually did that. So it primarily was a, a presentation and, um, and then the, the slides available afterwards so not a lot of readings and i think you know we had a question from somebody about uh you know what the expected time commitment is for the fellows and a couple fellows chimed in to, to make to uh make sure i'm right on this uh it really there isn't a big load week to week outside of the the virtual inst that hour for the virtual institute and then the the travel uh we may try to formalize that a little bit more this coming year and maybe give you some some background material uh, but we'll we'll keep it light because we're we're incrementally in improving this thanks fun 
next uh, next question, unless someone else wanted to comment on that one. Uh, so uh, this is Jay. I'll comment briefly. I I, I think that uh, requirement is uh, is like it's not like a class. You you do assignments. You have a quiz. You have an exam. You know, um, I think that uh, how much you want to invest in your time depends on how much you want to get out of it, right? So if there's a topic that was presented, you're really interested. You feel it's in line with your career. You want to spend a lot of time, another twenty hours into it. That's up to you. Thank you, Jay. Next question. Can applying fellows collaborate with existing CI fellows? I would give that a resounding yes. We, collaboration is wonderful. Um, and I, and I just judging from this group, I'm not alone in that feeling. So does anybody want to object? <laughs> Absolutely, and I'll be honest, we're, we're still figuring out the logistics of this, but minimally, we imagine the fellows all being added to a, a growing email list so they can exchange questions and communicate uh, with each other. And we're talking to the 2019 fellows now about roles they might play in, in 2020 to help that cohort along. So we absolutely want to encourage that, and frankly, we're open to ideas on, on how to do that. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. I see one more question in the chat. Can you do, can you go into more detail regarding the bio sketch? Is it more like a resume, an NSF bio sketch, or something for a web page as the current fellows have? Um, so the bio sketch, we just said two page bio sketch because some folks, you know, if you have an NSF bio sketch, that's perfectly appropriate. Um, if you don't, then, you know, a two page resume or anything like that. It's just for us to kind of figure out who you are a little bit. What it ends up on the web pages is, is something that we work together to write as your bio to go on there, you know, like you would put in for a conference or something like that. Um, that's my answer. Does anyone like want to add anything to that? I'll, I'll just encourage um, folks when you do submit your bio sketch, you know, think about the things that Dana mentioned, uh, emphasize connections to NSF science and projects, emphasize things that, that show your, you know, any prior interest in cybersecurity. Uh, you know, we get a number of applications that say, I'm really interested in cybersecurity, but they don't provide any evidence of that. So if you've got things you've done that that shows that this is more than just a, um, uh, you know, a, a quick, you know, passing interest, you know, please do emphasize uh, those, those things in your bio sketch. Uh, I don't have any real proclivities about the, the format past that. I think it's about more what you put in there. Shafak, did you want to chime in? Well, yes, I think I, I just wanted to kind of answer the prior question um, on the the readings and assignments and stuff. Again, I think I would echo, Jay, that this is an investment and um, the more you put into it, the more you get out of it. And um, I did find that I spent um, a lot of additional time because I would be, whatever I'm learning, I would be bringing it back to my team and we would have additional sessions and we would discuss those. and have further discussions on, okay, how does this apply to us? How can this help us? And um, so that ties back to during the application, you're supposed to provide letter of support and, and that letter of support is from, you know, whoever is the supervisor to ensure that, yes, you will have the time commitment and, you know, what is the value added and benefit. So you, if you can tie all those things together, that it's, more than just a personal professional development opportunity, right? It is really what you are bringing back to the institution, this collective knowledge that would take a lot of time and commitment if you were to do it on your own versus when you're doing that learning as part of a, like a communal learning. So that, that's really what, you know, is, the, is, the, is the, the time commitment piece of it. And um, yeah, that's it, sorry, I, I was not able to answer earlier. Thank you, Shavak. Um, and yeah, I think 
Bond's advice too, to echo that a little bit about trying to be specific in your application, you know, what differentiates you from other applicants. Um, so, you know, make it personal. <laughs> okay, so I don't see any more questions right now. And give it 30 seconds. So any final comments from any of the the panelists, the fellows? Um, this entrel, uh, please apply. Uh, really, really apply. Uh, I again, this was such a wonderful opportunity. Um, great great group of people. And I still, uh, you know, as we're wrapping things up here, I'm still going to Dana and Vaughn going, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. Do you think I'm crazy? You know, so it's just nice um, <laughs> to get that guidance um, from folks who are more seasoned and uh, really, uh, you know, know a lot more than, uh, than what I certainly do and just getting that guidance. And it's a very nurturing environment. It's a safe place to, um, to really learn. Uh, and so, so, really, really apply. I, I don't know what more I can say to encourage you to do that, but this was a great opportunity. Uh, in fact, when we were winding things down, uh, the, the sort of sentiment, resounding sentiment was, wait, what? We're done. Um, can we have more time? Can we have more sessions, right? So you don't, you don't see that unless you've got a good thing, uh, a strong connection was formed. Um, you know, so it's a, good, it's a good feeling of the community. So uh, really do apply. Thanks, Anshul. And I, I just wanted to add, uh, I don't know what is the demographic of the attendees here, but uh, when we were at the NSS Cybersecurity Summit, um, there were quite a few uh, students who came up and were asking whether uh, they can apply as well. And the answer to that, of course, is yes, you should, because uh, again, it is a lot of um, uh, learning that um, happens, you just have to tie it and make that use case of how um, does that uh, apply to you and what are the NSF projects that you are engaged in currently as a student that, um, you know, will benefit from that. And uh, by all means, talk to your advisor as well and um, have, uh, have them involved and engaged and they will be able to give you ideas also on how to make your application stronger. Thanks, Shafak. Okay, I think that that should take us to the wrap up. Um, again, thank you. Thank you, Vaughn. Thanks, Jeanette. Thanks, fellows. And thanks all the attendees for coming. Remember the due date is January 17th. And we will, uh, I think, send out an email to the announce list probably with the video and pointer to the slides and we'll post it a link from the fellows page on the Trusted CI website. So with that, thank you everyone for coming. Yeah, I'll just echo the thanks to the 2019 fellows for being a great initial cohort. And I hope uh, we get applications from a number of the attendees today. Be real excited to see those. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks everybody. I'm going to stop recording now. Have a great day. <laughs>